Hey guys, it's Doug McGuff with uh, drmcguff.com. That's drmcguff.com. Uh, it's time for another little chalk talk. Um, recently, uh, for those of you that uh, follow Lawrence Neal's uh, podcast, 15 Minute Corporate Warrior, um, there have been some recent discussions about higher levels of volume and frequency than is what is recommended in Body by Science. And for followers of Body by Science, when you read the book, um, it's very easy to get locked in into thinking that the volume and the frequency that's prescribed there is an absolute requirement for the production of results. And that's simply not true. Um, we were just offering a framework wherein we thought the majority of the population would be able to find results. That would be a good starting point. That is not to say that there are not elements of the population on the far ends, either end of the bell curve, that might require higher frequencies um, or even less frequency and volume. But nothing about volume, frequency, or intensity is a locked-in absolute requirement to produce results in terms of muscle mass, physical conditioning, or anything else. For the longest period of time, and still ongoing, the assumption is that for really high-level results, that much larger um, volumes and frequency than are what prescribed or prescribed in body by science is what is necessary. But fortunately, we've had enough popularity in the training modality where people that are more gifted in those realms are starting to make use of it and show that, yeah, if you have the genetic gift, you don't necessarily need these higher volumes and frequencies. And two of the biggest gifts to that notion have been Jay Vincent, a follower of HIT and runs his own HIT studio, who in his last interview with Lawrence was able to articulate that he dropped his frequency down to something fairly minimal, uh, minimal and that um, even with less frequency and less volume than he had been doing in the past, it's just not showing any decrease in his results, so he has no problem doing less. And the same thing for Alex Fergus, who followed the Body by Science model to win the uh, Real Fit contest at Paleo FX. But for those of you who have been at a lower volume and have listened to some of the interviews with James Steele or Brad Schoenfeld, and you think maybe I'm missing out on something by doing lower volume and frequency, I'm here to tell you that it's absolutely fine to go up in volume and frequency. Um, for the longest period of time, I mean, I did it. I did it for 20 years because that was sort of the Ellington, Darden, Nautilus principles. Um, and I did somewhere between 18 and 21 exercises to complete muscular failure plus negatives or deep end road or force reps um, three days a week. Um, so, and I made very good results over the course of those 20 years. Um, but then I cut back on my volume and frequency and had some renewed results. And that's not to say that if you've been following a low volume and frequency, Perhaps if you increase your volume and frequency, you will show renewed results. But I want to show you here that the variables are not anything magical, and there's no magic mix that's going to bring you beyond your genetic ceiling. But let's discuss in another context what I mean. I have a very dear friend um, named Edwin Leap, who uh, used to be a partner of mine in Blue Ridge Emergency Physicians, since left to do independent work, and he's also the best writer that um, I've ever known. Um, he lectures around the country to emergency medicine residents. When they're getting ready to go out and get their first job, he tells them there are three variables here. And the variables are you can live in a really cool place, you can work a reasonable amount, and you can make good money but you can only have two out of the three. So if you want to make good money, 
you can work a reasonable amount, but you're going to have to live in a kind of a not so stellar place. Or you can make good money, live in a cool place, but you're going to have to work your ass off. Or if you want to prioritize living in a cool place and you want to work a reasonable amount, you're not going to make much money. Or if you want to live in a cool place and make good money, you're going to work your butt off. All those things exist on a continuum. And if we can consider a slide bar on each one of these things, like you see in a recording studio when you're dubbing music, you can slide up and down the scale of each one of those things and find the combination that makes you happy. And that's true in lots of different areas, and it's true for us. We can say make good money is intensity. And work a reasonable amount, we'll call that volume. And live in a cool place, we'll call frequency. So what's going on with the body by science model is we take this dial way out to here. So as a consequence, volume and frequency have to stay on the low end of this continuum. But that's not to say that you can't dial this back some in order to dial these up. Now clearly, because we're talking about strength training, there is some point on the intensity scale where if you go too low, you're not really going to stimulate any results because you're not going to recruit and fatigue, and we'll make that arbitrarily right there. But that gives us lots of room to slide. And for most people in the high intensity realm, if you want to experiment with increasing your volume and frequency and see if it gives you better results, that's very easy to do. Because we have pegged this dial all the way out here on intensity. And all it takes is to reel this back a little bit to be able to bring this up quite a bit in both directions. The reason being is the distance between here and here in terms of the toll it takes on your physiology is massive. And I'll explain why in a little bit. But let's say we dial your intensity back a little bit. You're doing five exercises once a week. If we dial that intensity back just a little bit, say eliminate deep in road technique and just stop immediately at failure, guess what? Um, volume can go up from five to eight exercises and frequency can go from once to twice a week very easily and you will recover quite nicely. So that's if you stop right at failure. But I want to offer something that will allow you to increase both even a little bit more so you can see the contribution of volume and frequency to results. Because in the high intensity paradigm, we always view both of these as a negative factor. But that's only because we have pegged this so far out that it has to be a negative factor. But volume cannot be zero. And frequency cannot be zero. Because without volume or frequency, there is no exercise being done and there's no adaptations to be made. So these are variables that do matter in the equation. And to some extent, if you dial this back, you can take these variables that also matter and dial them up. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Instead of just stopping at failure, let's stop sub-failure, but still very meaningful intensity. So what I want you to do to find out what this feels like is to pick an exercise that you're fairly skilled at and I want you to use a 3-6 cadence. 3 seconds up, 6 seconds down. And you do that exercise set with good form using that cadence. As you reach the end of the set, as you're nearing failure coming to fatigue, pay attention 
When you get to the point where your positive excursion takes four to six seconds, despite your greatest effort, that is you're starting to bog down. You cannot, long, you cannot, you can no longer do a three second positive. When you start to bog down to four to six seconds, stop there. That's your sub failure stopping point for this experiment. Now what's happened there is when you start to bog down, you've recruited all the motor units that you can recruit. What happens between bogging down and complete failure is you've recruited all the motor units you can recruit, now you're just firing them in a faster cycle. So it's like taking the pistons of a car that are firing randomly and ramping up the RPMs. So you've recruited everything you can by this bog down point. Between bog down and failure, you're just neurologically firing more quickly until you exhaust neurotransmitter and go to failure. So we're going to stop here. What that's going to allow you to do is very easily increase your frequency to two or even three times a week. And you can increase your volume where you're doing not one set of each exercise, but two sets of each exercise. Or if you prefer, instead of five, go as high as ten exercises. And do that two times a week. Or even three times a week if you're at the sub-failure point. And then see how your body responds. But understand, when you're manipulating these variables to determine an optimal workout frequency, volume, etc., that this is not just being done on a workout by workout basis. Recovery doesn't occur just from one workout to the next. Instead, take a more aerial view of your workouts and your progress. So look at a period of time where I'm going to emphasize more volume and frequency in exchange for a slight decrease in intensity and carry that out for a period of weeks. And if you show better results with that, Great, but don't be like the person that's watching the tide come in and measuring it every 15 minutes and assume that the entire city is going to be underwater in a week. Because it's not the way it works. You will adapt to this combination of intensity, volume, and frequency. And then later, you can change it up. You can go back to pegging the needle here and ramping this back down or you can move or manipulate these slide bars as you see fit. Milk it for as long as it goes, know that it's not gonna last forever, and then do something different. But know how to manipulate these variables and don't take it all as gospel. It's not that important. Skeletal muscle is adaptive. It will adapt and finish adapting to one combination of this, and then you can manipulate it somewhat again in the future. Um, so, I hope that addresses some of the questions that are going to be triggered by volume and frequency. The other thing is, when you do this, decide for yourself what your program is going to be for you. And then carry it out and have confidence in it. Because the placebo effect of that confidence is going to do more for your progress than any other manipulation that you could pick up by listening to someone else. But don't be afraid to experiment with this. It's not gospel, it's not religion, it's just exercise, and skeletal muscle is infinitely adaptable, and you can make use of that to your advantage. So for right now, this is Doug McGuff, Dr. McGuff, drmcguff.com, signing out. Talk to you next time.